honored to receive the award. Uh, often as a self-funded academic research staff, we work very hard to raise our own salaries, to raise funding, and to try to do research that not only produces publications and is fed into teaching for the students, but also that makes a contribution to the larger community. I've been doing pesticide research for over 20 years and a gentleman from an NGO approached me to indicate that he was worried about street sellers selling these very toxic products on the street and wondered if there was some way that we could work with them and look perhaps at finding a way of keeping their economic viability of because they make a lot of money selling the street pesticides but to remove the street pesticides because of their toxicity. So the research project started out looking at street sellers and their occupational exposures. We then tried to make a link to see whether children were actually being exposed to street pesticides and whether there were poisoning cases coming in. So we looked at Children's Red Cross Hospital, which is a referral hospital, and tried to look at the records because what's happening is the products are unlabeled. So the person treating, the clinician treating the child would think it was a commercially bought. So we tried to make the link by going through the case reviews and then producing this point chart. So the idea was that when the child came in they would then point at the chart or the caregiver would point to the chart so that we could link the product that was on the street. Then we conducted then a household survey within uh, Kailiche and Philippi. We interviewed 200 households to see whether people were actually using the products extensively and we found very high use of uh, the street pesticides, both the liquids and the aldicarb. We then handed out 400 rat traps to see whether it would work as an alternative. The idea is to try to see if we can give street sellers an alternative to these products but still make a living off them. So this is another example of a street pesticide that's being sold in either taxi ranks or on trains or you get sellers who move up and down the uh, streets in the townships, Philippi, Guguleto, and that's why we're standing here at a taxi ray, similar to places where they normally sell it. So this is uh, elder carb. It's small granules that are, it's a nematicide that's actually meant for putting in the soil to control nematodes and they're being packaged into these small packages which you would pay sort of 50 cents to a rand for these. Uh, one of these sachets contains enough elder carb in them to kill five to six children weighing 10 kgs or less. That's the toxicity of them. People buy these, as you can see, the packaging is not very strong and then the granules will fall out. So what we were doing is we were trying to see whether kids were having access to these chemicals and being poisoned and we were going through the record reviews at Red Cross Children's Hospital. We had an eight-month-old child who'd got a hold of this packet empty. It had already, the pellets had been removed and sucked it and was actually poisoned for, and was in hospital in ICU for three days. What they do with the granules is they mix it with bread or with millipup and then put it on the floor. And so the, most of the children poisoned are under the age of four. What the underlying issue is that it's all to do with poverty-related uh, pests and not enough is being put in poverty alleviation strategies to do with pest management. And so individuals are being left to manage pests themselves. So people are looking for cheap and effective products and the demand is there and so the supply is also there.